the Wallywood Artist Edition is the subject of today's video. Uh, one of the high points in comics art history, from, at least from an illustration point of view. Hello and welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. I want to remind everybody before we dive into this beautiful book that we are a daily comic book YouTube channel. We have over 1,500 videos in our back catalog and you can search the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube homepage to find your favorite cartoonist or comic book. 1,500 videos, we've probably covered them by now. I also want to remind everybody that we do have a Cartoonist Cafe Patreon. It's one of the ways we keep the lights on here. We have three different levels that will give you access to our videos early. And at the King Kayfaber level, you'll get access to all of our videos first because you can actually sit in on our recording session. So whenever the uh, perfect book crosses your path, you'll be the first one in line to pick that up before it disappears from the aftermarket or skyrockets in price, something we call the Kayfabe effect. Check out our Patreon, see which level suits you best. All right, Ed, Wally Woods Stories, Artist Edition. I believe this was the second Artist Edition that IDW released after the... Uh, the uh, Rocketeer? Rocketeer, that's exactly right, yes. And um, I had not bought the Rocketeer. These are big, expensive books. And then I went into Pittsburgh Comics, uh -huh. and it was sitting there in person, and I could not resist. <laughs> this is a beautiful, unbelievable book. You know, you guys are seeing it for scale. It's basically as big as my arm right. in height. You know, this is a time whenever the artwork was drawn what's known as two up. So it would be printed at a quarter of the size that you see this book. But for somebody like Wally Wood, look at the detail that we're getting in his beautiful ink work. I'm looking at the shadow on these like little buttons. I mean, he gets that molecular with it. And I, this is the perfect way to to experience that uh you know no holding lines on the little naga hide straps or 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 uh what do you call that I mean, laces uh so just like letting the light kind of be the sort of top line stopping the shadow at the right time to make it feel like it's 3d like like he's he's doing that he's choosing to do that uh and we're not even talking about like the methods and materials and the application of zips and all, all that kind of stuff like this is this is crown jewel artwork and uh man this came out about 2012 2011 uh i was broke as fuck it was it was hip-hop family tree that got me out of abject poverty dude and i saw these books i never thought i would ever be in a position to be able to buy an artist edition i'll be honest with you man i'm just like you know be humble and never have the opportunity so uh whenever you get one like like we'll just look and if you remember like we were so precious with them when we started to get them that we would have like artist edition parties you remember that <laughs> yes shit? yeah like like uh yo I'll, I'll bring a couple you bring a couple <laughs> spread like, the well yeah yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> one of us buy it everybody look yeah 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 it's fantastic but you know the artist editions are so amazing as a format, and I think part of it was they picked such great material in the beginning. Dave Stevens, Rocketeer, that stuff shines. Wally Wood, probably the preeminent science fiction illustrator in comics, and you see it uh, on this cover, and we're going to see it in many of the pages inside, but it is the perfect subject for this type of treatment. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Again, one of their early design choices was we're going to do these killer end pages, and what that usually means is take a panel blow it up and really just like show us something that we could not see if we didn't have access to the original art and even if you did you wouldn't have this kind of crisp detail when i was doing aphrodisiac i would scan comics you know one panel at huge resolutions you know 1600 dpi and blow it up and really look at it and that's what you're getting here and i think it's such a brilliant choice because when do you ever see a canvas this side to show off comic book art totally got to take advantage of it and great it's, choice yeah it's, and it's a little stuff too like like he instead of just chipping off the dots he he cuts that out so that you could see through that rock formation so that's like the level of care that you're getting with it with his own craft and we get to celebrate at that very you know giant level it, it is weird like of all the because i know this works so well I don't know that this is the one to blow up, and I don't know if those end papers are the one to blow up, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, but I do just or love the, the spectacle of it, yeah. you know, is, is really the, the piece, my and, takeaway. And you know what else, man? 
That is suspiciously close to fucking Comic Sans. It is very close. You're right. If it's not, I'm surprised, but, you know, doesn't the D in IDW mean uh, design? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because, like, you'll get details like this is a blow-up that I think is just beautiful. Yeah. You know, you really get to see his double lighting that he's known for. The eyes, you know, being able to see it at that kind of level. Oh, man. Yeah, it's such a tremendous level of thought, too, because you, you get locked into the way that you do eyes and, and ears and noses and stuff like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, the light is coming hard from the bottom uh, up. So... Typically, when you're drawing eyes, like you make the top eyelid the 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 thick line, but because the light's coming from below, you got to make the bottom eye of the eyelid uh, the thick part. You can really see the structure of the skull. Yeah, you know, like this is a guy that knows what he's drawing. Absolutely. And here's your table of contents, so you can see what is being reprinted there. And um, Jesus, you know, you think of like EC Comics as sort of this historical high point in terms of page rate and yeah. the quality of illustrators. The third piece is the preservation of this art. Right. So much of this EC art has, we have gotten to see in this artist edition format. I, it's so ultimate. luck. Yeah. It's so lucky. Well, and in this case, there's a famous story of the house where this was stored being burning down. And this was in a metal filing cabinet that that's what preserved some of this artwork. Now, I do wonder about that. I know that happened to Wally Wood, but Gaines had an iron fist on the art. So like maybe this this stuff was still in Gaines's possession, but I, but I know what you're saying because Wally Wood's house fucking burnt down, but I don't know that these guys got their pages back ever. Yeah, I don't think they did. I didn't realize that was Wally Wood's house in that story. Maybe it wasn't. I did. I'd never heard a story that EC burnt down. Well, it wasn't EC. No, it would have been a a, a, a third party collector was what I thought. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I I have no idea. So this is duo shade paper. You know, we're going to see a lot of different uh, textures being applied here. But interesting to see, like, all the materials that everybody's using, right? Yeah, and look how frugal he is. So it's not even <laughs> the whole panel. Right. It's just that window that gets it. Yeah, and you can see it's this, you can see, like, it's this part of this panel. Right. That gets and, it here. And that lets you know, too, that it's already lettered by the time it comes to, to Wally Wood's hands. So you got to make room for that lettering. Interesting. I always wonder um, with EC's method of having like the lettering on the boards. Mm -hmm. Was there a script in addition, or was it just like, okay, artist, read read the lettering and, and draw something that makes sense? Yeah, there wasn't. And 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 dude, we did that uh, Bill Gaines conversation, and, and I think in that deposition, like he he says as much that like they receive this, and you, it's the it's the great flaw of EC Comics is that you read this and then it's the image is the thing. That you're describing, so it's redundancy, which is antithetical to, to good comics. Right. Hitting it with the ra uh, with a razor, Just sliding the the blade against the the black ink to kind of chip off the ink to give you those little stutter steps. The costuming here is very very much Alex Raymond inspired Flash Gordon type science fiction uh, imagery. Yeah, you definitely see the that Alex Raymond influence throughout. Mm -hmm. Even with this kind of stuff. It's just marvelous to see these things. And every time we look at an EC Artist Edition, I say it, but I can't imagine putting this level of work on the page knowing it's going to be shrunk way down. Right. And then put on almost toilet paper. Yeah, totally. Pa Printed on paper towels, you know? Yeah. You're, you, yeah, you know, you like you don't want to be the schmuck no. um, amongst like all those great artists and stuff. And when you see this stuff, it really is iron sharpens iron. I'm seeing some marks here that make me think that uh, Joe Orlando had a little hand in the assistance of uh, of this page. That's a really good call because like some of that facial features stand out. Some of this face has a little bit of a, I don't know, an oddness to it as well. Yeah. And, and it's weird because like, maybe it's even Bill Elder because he's su such a heavy-handed inker. Like, he's he inked uh, Severin. What do we got here? Is that a whiteout and completely redrawn or is that a paste-up? Looks like a paste-up to me. You can see kind of the edge of the paper here. Yeah. My eyes ain't so good and, and I didn't want to put my head into the damn <laughs> camera. Oh, I'm like feeling it like I'm going to be able to tell. Right. It feels tactile. I mean, it speaks to the quality of, of uh, this the scans or photographs or whatever. Yes, definitely. It's a really, this is a really great collection too because you get like the sci-fi, you get some of the different genres being shown off yeah. in the collection. It's interesting to me that you have a screen tone used here, 
but then over here we're going to cross hatch. Right. You know, it's it's there's so much technique on display, and I guess Wood's pretty young at this point. Sure. Yeah. Totally. And and what else is interesting is um, seeing this kind of foreshortening stuff. It really makes you respect what Kirby did in terms of foreshortening because he created a different like logic to it. And this is the Lufine logic of foreshortening with these kind of like very rubbery, yeah. long figures and stuff. When do you think the Kirby foreshortening becomes popular? Uh, For even Kirby? Because like it's not like Kirby had yeah. it at this era. It was it was the Atlas comics. It was it was the uh you know, the nuclear age stories and, and of course it solidified way more with the superheroes because it wasn't even a hundred percent there, you'd see germs. Yeah. And then it's probably it's Marvel. Post that is Stan Lee being like, draw more like this totally. guy. Totally. Herb Trimpy and all those kind of guys. Totally. I always love this architecture. You know, like seeing the detail that goes into uh, not just Wood's work, but in EC, like a lot of these guys would bring a high level of this this kind of detail. You know, like a real sophistication of, I don't know, looking at a morgue file that includes contemporary furniture. Right. Uh, architecture. You know, just really... Honestly, earning your page rate. Yeah, you know, for like sure. like at a time whenever you're getting paid two two times, maybe five times more than the competition, they're putting it on the page. They are, man. And you never see him doing this kind of like a negative uh, silhouette. That might be the only time I've ever seen Wally would do that. So the uh, adapted from a story by Ray Bradbury looks like a paste up. Yeah. I wonder if this is something that, <laughs> One of the that, ones that came in uh, yeah. <laughs> when the le- when the letter came in. Oh, you forgot to pay me my fifty bucks, and uh, how's about giving me a little credit? Oh, this is fun for seeing some of these different tones used. Look at this, piling on a couple of screen tones so you get a moray pattern there. Dude, it, it's a moray from the start, like, before it even shrinks down. What the fuck must that look like? Yeah, I was going to say, it makes you wonder the finished printed piece. But look at this, man, like parallel lines for a screen tone here. Uh, a non, you know, not not, not so mechanical a- exactly. And especially with this, very organic pattern there. And yeah. maybe white dots. Yes, I think so. I think man. that is white dots. This that, has to be almost everything that you had as an illustrator at your disposal. Yeah, just like all your scraps, all your all your scrap tones and shit, man. Ain't that the craziest, mangiest looking pup? Yes. Drawn, drawn animals drawn hard. In, yeah, drawn in a lot of angles and stuff. Yeah, and ex- some expression, you know, like body language of a dog. But then also these images of like no people, right? Right. It's, it's really an unusual story. So, so interesting. And actually, like I would bet... Not not too fun to draw, really, man. Like, I don't know about you, but but the people in the scene are always like more fun than drawing the background pieces. Some references here to like Picasso. Mm-hmm. Again, I wonder, like, what kind of uh, what kind of morgue files does he have on modern art? Right <laughs> in the fifty early fifties. Animals again? Yeah, yeah. There's like a whole menagerie, and on you know it's, that's Chekhov's menagerie. I also look at this stuff and think, like, with the level of rendering in black and white, almost a shame that this stuff couldn't have just been published in black and white. True. You know, you think of, like, the Warren magazines in, in the 70s or something whenever you're getting ink washes and that black and white presentation, but, like, it's all here. Yeah, for sure. This video is brought to you by the books that we make. New from Ed Piscor, X-Men Grand Design, collecting all three volumes of the X-Men Grand Design series in one convenient volume. Three volumes of Red Room now available, Crypto Killers, The Antisocial Network, and Trigger Warnings. And the beautiful Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, going quickly. So pick this one up while you can. All four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree in one beautiful hardcover, along with about 150 extra pages, notes, artwork, everything you could possibly want in the Hip Hop Family Tree. The latest offering from me, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, Goes with Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive, both books completely self-contained, but together they collect all of the Street Angel comics that I have made so far from Image Comics, which means you can get them wherever you get books uh, or comics. My self-published offerings, True Crime Funnies, the 1988 zine, and the BW zine are all available on jimrug.com or patreon.com slash jimrug and Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design mythos. Uh, out of print at the distribution level. So pick this one up if you come across it before they are all gone. And now back to our video. What's interesting is that Zipatone screens, like you have to be, cho- you have to sh- be strategic. Like, like there's not a page of Zipatone that's this this big if you put hold it landscape. So it has to cut off maybe here and you get a chunk here and you get a chunk or like something like that. Maybe 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 right. this and then that little one's a chunk. But 
you you have to you have to play with it. Do you think something fell off here? It looks like it, right? Yeah, because I should should probably have the night sky through that. Really cool. And this lettering is that? That's Wally Wood. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, really, really nice lettering. Yeah, like when you see this big bold, that's that's indicative of the Wally Wood style of uh, of lettering. Oh, man, all the textures are so great. You could feel it. You know, you could feel that bomber jacket and, and with the with the with the with the collar. Because these are like one and done stories that are, you know, seven, you know, eight pages long at maximum, everybody's out of central casting. So mm -hmm. so your like your grizzled uh military vets and stuff have to look a certain way. Your hero has to look a certain way. Like you, you have to communicate so much visually early because you just don't have the real estate to, to get too deep. Great tie and uh, shirt collar. Yeah. <laughs> I've been drawing those lately and it's like, that's really good. Yeah. It's, that's a, that's a trefoil. And I was like learning about that because I was curious where the clubs come from, from the suit of cards. Yeah. Because it's like, we know what a spade is. We know mm -hmm. what a heart and a diamond is. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is a club? And it's based off of uh, the trefoil design, is what it's called, or maybe it's trefoil, T R E F O I. Man, this face is such a type. Yeah, it makes me think like a compilation of wood faces that are lit that way would be really interesting to watch that evolution over time. Because I'm sure by the time he's in the '70s or whatever, that's just like yeah, left-handed. I'm asleep. Otomo draws that fa that face from that angle uh, a lot too. I also admire like whenever you get to see these backs, you know, the backs of the heads. Yeah. There's a lot to take from this stuff. I went through a bunch of Gilbert Hernandez, like three of those uh, graphic novels that he did, The Chance in Hell and stuff, recently. And it's real interesting to see kind of, you know, you, you, you get the front, the side, the three quarters. Yeah. You know, but you have some of that here. Right. You know, it's it, like that's a cartoon shorthand in, in a way, but it allows you to read fast. Mm -hmm. That's a tough drawing. It's, yeah. it's the hand in perspective coming at an angle that is not an easy thing to draw. It isn't. And I wonder if you extend this drawing out, if it all kind of fits right. Right. You know, there's some stuff going on there. But that's a lesson that I, I try to think about, too. Like, when you're cropping people, sometimes you have to sort of, like, lie a little you, you bit. you got to cheat at some. To communicate what it is you're trying to say there. It's the first little bit of dry brush we've seen so far, I believe. Or at least that I made note of. And uh, and we're, we're beginning to see... The Wally Woods 22 panels that always work. I was going to say, yeah, man. And and it is, you know, it's a controversial statement and stuff, right? The 22 panels that always work. Because it was like, uh, Ivan Brunetti would talk about, like, it's the 22 panels that always work when you receive a piece of paper with this amount of text all over it, and you're trying to keep something interesting for yourself. You know, the argument is that maybe it's not necessarily good for comics making. It's good for illustrating. You can see your screen tone where it's being pieced together there. Right. Kind of kind of interesting. And, you know, looking at these, like, these are beautiful illustrations to me. If I saw this printed in the book, I'd be mad that they're like these tiny little, like, you know, postage stamp size in the printing. But I look at these and I think, like, it's about 50-50 space-wise what you're getting between text and image on right. these pages. And there's, there's kind of an interesting... I, that feels like an interesting concept to me if you're selling this stuff and maybe to a little bit more sophisticated audience. Yeah. It's only recently that I've been able to to pay attention more in my own drawing to the way shirts lie on a human figure on with back anatomy. Getting the... Um, wrinkles of the shirt and stuff to kind of go along the contour form. Like we've drawn the front of people's chest so many times, but I've finally built into my practice a little bit more effort into, and a little bit more observation into the the back of yes. shirts and stuff. This is one of those weird drawing things too, where it's like, okay, dark shirt, dark background. How do we make that all clear? You know, so maybe you'll hit a, some light on a shoulder. You have your arm be a nice white arm to give that extra space. It's it's such a dumb thing to observe. Well, that's, that's what we're here for, man. But it's, it's very much uh, in use. Okay, dude, look at this, man. It's a paste-up just yes. to get Duotone on this guy's shirt. Wow. That's all it's for. It almost, it, But it reads almost like male practice suite, the, um, the Art Spiegelman strip where it has mm -hmm. like the clip art guys and weird shit going on on the outside. Yeah, it's weird to see like the slightly different paper colors between uh -huh. the two. But look, you have it going on here, you know. 
the guys in their uh, duo shade t-shirts. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting though, is that the way that um, it, it's scanned, they're fucking with the levels a little bit because like when you scan it, you should st- we should still be able to see the lines of the undeveloped very faintly. If you look at any of the other stuff, you know, the the Daredevil, any of the newer EC books, you would see the undeveloped lines faintly, but you don't see them there. You could see it through the through the ink line and shit, but like they're playing with levels in a a little bit. That's weird, man. It is uh they're completely invisible. Yeah. And that's just not the way it is. That's so strange. Because you are getting some like like nuance, you know, like you can see brush strokes in some of this. It's not like they're blown oh, out see, like some yeah, of these yeah. levels are. Yeah. It could it could very simply be the white level. Like you know how there's like the three the, like it could very simply just be the white which which would speak to the different color like so so maybe yeah could be yeah i find this kind of stuff interesting is like okay so you have your lettering in the panel or whatever are they tasked with drawing like a caption box or choosing not to because there's no white out here to yeah. eliminate that line right um so interesting whenever you look at different artists like uh Kriegstein or somebody who takes this page and then does stuff you right. know cuts it up adds panels and things even though the lettering is probably consistent like how these guys manipulate the lettering that's on the board or what is here really interesting and then if you're the person lettering and laying this out what makes you go down for this caption right you know it's so bizarre how these panels lay out or or how the page would have looked minus any of the artwork yeah very right very true even how close the panels are to the captions is is this is an exceptional Strange. page of textual bullshit. <laughs> like okay. like with this. That that's that's exceptional. And this throws everything off. So this letter had to just do whatever he fucking could. And I would say that this is not like this it should be opposite. So like I would say that in order to clearly read this page, you see how there's a caption box there it should probably be over this one yes since it's directly there and then you could probably leave this one the open one maybe totally agree but you know what's interesting too is this is handed to you you know again i don't see white out around here like you didn't take a border away right so then you get an open panel so is it like the editor writer is conceptualizing this is you could do an open panel here right what you do see is pencil so maybe the letterer does that Boy, these pasted up duo shape things are so weird. Yeah, and and I bet like playing with like the levels and stuff is making the seam show up even more or something. Mm-hmm. Because once again, you're not really seeing the undeveloped lines, and it's 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 blowing out the um, duotone. Now, duotone is not archival. If I, I have pages that I drew myself, and that you know have hit the light and stuff, and and it's almost vaporized. Also, like whenever you see pieces that you like, like to me, this is a, a wood ism, you know, the way he'll do a sphere, sure. especially like, yeah, with the, it's the craters uh huh, and it's the way the light hits the craters for sure. we got some cool tones here. This is a fantastic page. Yeah. Very rare that you get a full splash page. Yeah, I mean, there's a panel, but you know what I'm saying to have like an image this big. It's, it's almost Johnny Craig is like one of the few people that ever really got that chance. This is some more of your like cheating, like, like uh, you see the black of the mm-hmm. bottom of the plane and, and the black background. So it's like you have to have these lightning bolts and stuff come through, and 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 that is a fantastic way. To, like you, you never, you've never seen this before or since this kind of like approach to lightning. Yeah, I absolutely fall in love with this, where it's like you just have two bolts of lightning really defining the underside of that airplane. Yeah, so good, and white media. For your screen tone on top of that skull yeah or yeah i guess i guess or or just yeah 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 for sure yeah because he's drawing that of course yeah you're right how about you know one of these benefits of like okay we're gonna blow up this art we're gonna look at it original size and you're seeing like some of the marks he makes for shadows these are the roughest the brush strokes yeah it's true and yet they read perfect yeah even his foliage and stuff like that but what i will say is uh, of all the panels we've seen there's so much clarity muddy panel there's a lot going on there, and that, like, I don't want to be Marie Severin color in that one. 
Though, but she knew what to do. You know, she would color the main figures, give them some color, and then like hit it with like a yellow background or like a light blue background, and just not worry about all the all the crayons in a crayon box. I am in. That's love. a terrifying image. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'll say a, a lot of these are pretty uh, pretty interesting. I'm in love with these like I don't know amoeba like right. panel borders and stuff that come and go. You know, like almost an open panel. Not exactly, but almost. And several of them are that way. The flashback panels, but makes for a great page layout, especially, again, if you're stuck with this lettering. Yeah, totally. And you never see anybody do this, like, mercury dabs to kind of taper it off. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never seen that before. Great little silhouettes and fire going into that guy's hat. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, man, you talk about some terrifying images. These planes just falling out, literally falling out of the sky. Wow. So I look at this and I go, oh, Steve Ditko, Dan Klaus, all of us. Who has not tried to do that kind of double lighting? Oh, like totally. on a face? I uh, When I was young and working with uh, Jay Lynch, I, I sent some of the finished finish strips to... Um, Spain Rodriguez and he sent me back like he, he drew a bunch of stuff to like show what he learned about double lighting and shit look at these little details of like people in the background airplane even further back uh, in terms of creating depth yeah yeah for sure but what I will say about uh, Wood and he, and he has this trouble a lot is like when it comes to proportions and stuff in space he, he'll he draw big ass people in you know like People who are the size of three or four stories of a building sometimes, yeah. you know, like he'll draw big guys. So he's not he's not the greatest with it. Like he'll fill up the page, but he's not like Hal Foster mm -hmm. or Jeff Darrow and, and be able to get them correctly sized in space. Does it ever take you out of it? Not at all. Not at all. But but I think I think that that would matter to him. Like like he's such a good drawer that I think that like if he looked at it, he would be critical of it himself. Boy, there's some wild stuff going on here. Yeah. Like some of these very thin lines, I don't know what that is. Like I, I can't imagine inking those in reverse. So yeah. like are you scratching that out? Yeah, right. It looks like that. It totally looks like that. Could it be I mean, could it be a whole piece of scratch board? Possibly. Could it be illustration board that was of the quality back then that you could remove stuff like that? Yeah. And also like, why do it? It looks it, cool. It does look cool, but like how do you even conceive of that? Right. And and it, it literally could have just been that because we, we don't, I can't recall many more pieces like that. So maybe he saw that shit in a magazine. I was like, let me tr fucking try this. Keep the, keep the sword sharpened. And some of these title lettering treatments are masterpieces in and of themselves. That might be an example of what I was talking about. Like, you know, if, if you push, you know, he's in perspective, push his deer over. It's pretty big compared to like that, that fence. Another Ray Bradbury adaptation, too. What do we got up there in the first panel with the gray? Is that duotone? I can't tell what it is. Yeah. It's very odd. There's a little bit of texture, but nothing that's clear. Yeah, no, that's duotone, but that's the that's the uh, Howard Chaikin duotone okay. that, that he would use in American Flag, the pebbly, pebbly stuff. Yeah, and possibly, Ed, to your point earlier when you were saying how it was like it was washed out. Yeah. That's about what it usually looks like, which is weird because Basically, like, there's yeah. white here. So, you know, I think they are doing some stuff with the levels on that. But that's about what I, I think old, un, un uh, yeah, right. exposed right. duo shade looks like. Yeah, and this is an early artist edition, so they're kind of figuring things out a little bit. I love the, like, you get to see a little bit of the pre-printed stuff. So if you look closely, hopefully it shows up. They have the ruled lines that I think were printed on these. Yeah, you, which you know what? That, that's the indicator of, of what we're looking at because that stuff is blue. And that is not blue in our copy. So, so the scan, the fidelity is weird. And what we're seeing here, like, this is that, the Howard Chaikin duotones. Mm. There, with the, where it's the pebbly dots. Look at this weirdness. That is an actual tone that yeah. you can buy. And I, I, I don't know why you would ever want to use one that gives you an intentional moray. This is another one of those scratch board yeah. effects. Right. What is this print like? Right. You know what I mean? Like, none of that looks like it on... on it, it can't look that way in print. Not in a uh, comic. Comic. 
the degree of yellow on the pages, I always like that in the artist editions too. Like this one was stored somewhere else. Yeah, totally. You know, this might have even seen some sunshine here. And there. <laughs> <laughs> Someone showed this one off for a little while and paid the price. All right, man. One of the uh, one of the iconic classics, and again, looks like this one has been shown shown a bit. Yes. But you know what's it, what's it, weird here, and I. It looks like this is an edge of a page. Like a, it's, it, I think it's an overlay. I think it's a plastic overlay. That's got to be it. I was going to say, like, I wonder if this was matted and framed, mm. that part of this was exposed to more light than the rest, but I think the overlay is probably... So so we see that there's way more patina on this, and, and this is Wally Wood got... He wrote this, and, you know, it's his thing, I am Wood, blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe, like, Gaines is like, you know what, keep this one. You get to keep this one. It's this one's all you, because it's like the most yellow. Yeah, it really is. Oh man, what a beautiful! Like every single one of these panels, I feel like we could do an episode on. Totally. I mean, and and this is his like most. He's super inspired while he's putting it together, down to the point of like zips, duotone, uh, you know, a, a crayon on on um, on uh, toothy paper, you know, coquille board. So he's using all the stuff like th this is his this is opus. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is. But it's interesting to see like where where what are we cutting out? You know. Oh yeah, they they were f fucking around a little bit, huh? That's pretty cool. I think this is the cover to uh, one of the Fantagraphics. But there's that two book set the Fanta did. How good is the illusion of like liquid in these? You know, it, it's, depressions. It's great, and and like when you do it in your own work. It's always impressive to yourself, I feel like. Like when you put like the little shines on the water or like cut into it with some white, you're like, yeah, this really does feel like water now. I like the organicness of the shadow. Pretty good. And this is one of those panels where it's like every trick you got, pull yeah. it out. Yeah. Incredible. This is one where it feels like there are 12 illustrations here. It's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a Time Magazine illustration from that day. Drawing completely in the duo shade. Going full Roy Crane. You know what, man? Yeah, I guess not. I was going to say, I wonder if these are like full pages of duo shade, but they're not. Yeah. You can see the paste ups. There it is, dude. One of the most iconic panels probably in comics history. I am a science fiction artist. My name is Wood. Pause. <laughs> all of it. it. You know, it's all of the uh, cliches, really, of the day. You know, it's it's your it's your um, atomic age guys. It's aliens. It's incredible shrinking man. Really great. Now this is really I, it's so funny. Like in my mind, it's like oh, this is my era, and and and, and 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 all I mean by that is like this stuff was in like incredible science fantasy, which is like my some of my first uh, right Cochran editions. It's so strange to think this is comics in the fifties. Yeah, you know this is this is this is the direction comics are moving before we get the comics code. It's also um, so depressing to think of it that way. You know, like this is what we this is what our comics code effectively crushes. Right. You know, the page rates, the idea that we might make work that's a little bit more respectable, that might not be aimed at... What did that Marvel article say? Nine-year-olds or what? It was whatever. less. It was like seven-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> there it is, dude. Like, like uh, when, when I came across Wood's work, I already wanted to be a cartoonist, you know? And when I saw his stuff, to me, it was like gold standard of superhero comics. And, and he... This work made me feel like maybe I, I don't get to be a cartoonist, right? You know, like if I if you can't if this is from the fifties and you're supposed to do better than that, uh, maybe, maybe I don't get to be a cartoonist. Yeah, it's so true. Because like even if you like trace the major shapes and stuff, like you 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 still might not get it. So here's a question for you. I'm under the impression that borders would have been done by the letter. Okay. Maybe that's not true. But if it is, do you think he's scraping that off? They, that would be an approach. They, they would do that. Which, like, because you do. Because you're seeing, like, they're, you know, he's certainly right. scraping some ink off. Right now, today, we, we can't agree on a good white media. We, we, yeah. we use the word white media for, for the whiteout because people use white acrylic paint. 
People use white out pens, those Pentel pens. People use the liter white with the Japanese stuff. People so, use white tape. Yeah, so like, I'm sure they had even less in the in the fifties. Like maybe scraping is the best option. This is like a um, Liz Taylor type Cleopatra chick. Yeah, you can see like a Hollywood influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not, man? Isn't that what you're drawing? Beautiful, beautiful people. Yeah, the ideals, man. There's your nuclear family. Now you're seeing some white media. Whole lots. It's in random, like. Yeah. What's down here that you got to white Too out? Too much schmutz. Must have been. Too much cigarette butts. You know what's funny? This, this, ex <laughs> well, let's see if it's funny or not. <laughs> like do we have a template here is this compass but it's almost you know it's the same almost the same size of these uh portals that we're looking through even same perspective yeah yeah i mean i feel like that is in perspective though it's so funny to see these various like spheres repeated you know it's just the template set it's such a good it's such a great visual though like that big round it it is and and uh, you know like a rule that i came to myself by doing it enough and stuff is like you can only have one s complete circle on a page that's unbroken because it's such a fucking strong shape. Yes. And I think that in, at least intuitively, like other cartoonists have already arrived at that shape, at, at, that, at that rule set because, he, you know, he's breaking them up. Look at the lighting on that face. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, like no holding line on the bottom uh, eyelid. It's neat to see this and think of like some of the later wood that we've looked at, mm -hmm. and honestly, some of the speed. Yeah, you know, like 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 the the, the detail that he's putting into these panels is just unreal. Yeah, he paid for it. Uh, you know, he 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 really he really paid for it because because the the joke was always like uh, Jack, Jack Davis would tur turn something in o over the course of a weekend, and Hollywood was always behind the eight ball. This is a uh, this is three D stuff. Right. And uh, I, I actually scanned this and put it together yeah, to make it work? the 3D. Yeah, if I can find it, I'll put it in the video. I'm, I'm not sure where it is, if I can find it or not, but it's, it's amazing to see it. And, uh, you know, you can see the pieces that make up this piece where it's all composited. What's, it, what's the name of that, uh, th that th the 3D Maven guy? It's like Ozone something or? Ray Zone. Ray Zone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that without the Ozone so strange looking right but i mean we know what that is and it's cool to try it and i think i do think it works and, and certainly when you're playing with 3d and you know it like you need depth yeah so that's like another level of depth like maybe he wouldn't do that in something else right and i think it's like five layers so essentially what you're doing is changing the registration of each layer to create that depth i see it's cool to see there's a really great transcript online and it's joe kubert bill gaines I can't remember, maybe Feldstein. There's a, there's a third EC guy because it's in the EC offices, but they're arguing about 3D and patents and stuff. Like, man, there was a moment where it was like 3D was going to be the future of comics and we're going to fight over who has the right patent for right. it. And I, and I picture that whenever I see this story of like, boy, they bet on this. Them and the Cuberts and a few other publishers and a year later, it's nothing. Right, yeah, just such a, such Came a novelty. And, 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 and you get it, right? Because like, how does the lettering work, you know, like with these fuck, fucking weird glasses on? You know what it is? The lettering's the purple. The lettering's the registration. That's sort of the middle ground. I see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all Greek to me, so I can't even conceptualize it, to be honest. Yeah, I've done a good bit of it. It's kind of, it's, it's simpler than you would think, but maybe that's now because we have digital tools for it. Because you see here where it's like five layers of drawings right. and uh, you're trying to get all those together. Yeah. The thing that would always fall off for me with the 3D is um, the cut lack of color. You know, right. like you really, patterns work really well, but then you end up with a bunch of line work. Right. You know, if you're going to do a good 3D effect. Man. I do think elaborate like, detail here. They always talk about the science fiction stuff when it comes to wood, but I think so, some of his best stuff was in the shock suspense stories. I, I feel like this was the intentionally more adult um, series. Yeah. So, so I like I th really think that he was really putting in ma massive effort. This is a naked chick, by the way. 
What are you talking about? Like, I see your collar. Like there's almost no indication <laughs> of any kind of gear. It's so true. <laughs> like some of these drawings, it really does look that way. And it's and it's a Marilyn Monroe motif. I wonder if some of the the stories, if it's a matter of what spoke to him. I think so. You know, so. in terms of like, oh yeah, here's the rugged guy in the country, beautiful girl. Make it work. Yeah. This would have been a, uh, a Kurtzman team up, right? Absolutely. Frontline Combat, Bob Ben Odo on the on the lettering probably. Uh Ben Odo on 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 this uh t- title lettering. Now, there's that there's that old ad, Wallywood adage, um, you know, don't draw what you can trace, don't trace what you can cut out, paste up, and then there was like one other thing. Um when he would do his pa- his his tracing of a figure, you could almost always tell because because uh the proportions of the way people draw comic characters and stuff are more idealized and when you trace even a brawny figure a muscle man or something he's still just like eight heads tall if he's lucky so the heads look big mm-hmm. on a lot of the stuff that he traces off so I, I think that like maybe this piece might be one don't think it's just the helmet that's really making the head big could be I wonder if potentially this is like the first team up with Kurtzman you know pre-mad really uh you know, would have been where they, they started working together, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, of course, the war books come before MAD. Don't know that we've seen this yet. This looks like it could be... Possibly that's a textured paper, but also possibly that is like your your uh, grease pencil or something. Right, yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's a coquille board. And, and I mean, it's a paste-up. So so it's coquille board uh, with the grease... You used a grease pencil on that. It's so fun seeing all of that those pieces in this artist edition because it's like... Super great illustrator, relatively young, and it seems like he's just experimenting with stuff. Yeah, you know, right on the page. Speaking of which, like this kind of uh, cross hatching, haven't seen that anywhere. Super fine lines on cross hatching, and this is another one. Zero chance of this reproducing. Uh, yeah, zero. Yeah, super curious, and and it's and it's not even like you know, it's just like a field of a single value. Like it's not, it doesn't taper really, except except at a, you know the the final hour. Very kind of confusing. Great helmets, man. So much texture in those helmets. Seeing all of this mud work, because we've looked at... Did we look at Jack Davis's Artist Edition? Uh, that's a good I question. mean, I've looked at it, but if yeah, we looked course. at it on here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think about the mud from mm-hmm. the Jack Davis War Stories, and now it makes me wonder, like, is that Kurtzman that's figuring out the mud? Is that just something that was, like, shorthand for war? Right. Because it's so, you know, like a, like a really believable texture that I haven't seen that mud in the previous stories in this... Even that hand feels a little Davis. I like, like. I wonder if this is some kind of weird collaboration, man. Because I feel like I see Davis in here. How about Kurtzman in this figure? Yeah. Really keeping a lot of that. Boy, it's interesting to see this story in particular because it feels like this is uh, the most of someone else's hand uh-huh. in a wood story in this edition. The way I always describe... You know, like... You never see a wood no. figure like that. The way I always describe the Kurtzman collaborations when it comes to the EC guys is that Harvey Kurtzman turns the fantastic illustrators of EC Comics into cartoonists. Yeah. Turns them into storytellers. So that 22 panels that always work, it's never applicable in um, the Harvey Kurtzman stuff because Kurtzman is like pulling the reins. No, Wally, this is how we set it up for setup payoff, rhythm. You see it so much, like, this spread, I think, shows it a lot. Yeah. You know, some of these figures and the way they're moving, and it's very unwood-like. Uh-huh. You know, some of wood, I think, is super, I think of a stiff. Uh-huh. Um, static, almost, which is interesting, because I like Klaus, who also does that, and I think Klaus likes wood. Right. But this story, you're seeing that animated uh, characters moving around the panels a lot. Always interesting to see an artist where they are outside of their comfort zone. And the funny thing is, this scratch technique, whatever it is, I've seen it now like four or five times uh, this time flipping through. And it is an extra paper. So that's that's one thing. But that's not um, scratch board. I'm trying to see. I mean, that this is white paint, man. Mm. Here. Like, I, you could see it kind of over top of the white. But I'm lost. I don't know. <laughs> Those old submersibles. They they look like Max Fleischer robots in Superman cartoons or something. Could you imagine being a dude on one of those? No, not like, none of that stuff. No, thank you. If 
Famous image, reductive stuff, Sin City. Weird how this page is cropped. Yeah. I guess this whole story is cropped that way. You also don't see the uh, the headline printed. We're getting, so we're getting late period. Some different, different paper here. Man, these, page, these pages of like the atomic blast. I feel like Frank Miller, take notes. Oh, totally, totally. What a dramatic visual effect. Yeah. And I wonder, like, is that one that Kurtzman figured out? You know, like that effect where it yeah. was like, listen, I don't want any rendering on these, th this image, this, Im this panel. And, 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 and you see how, what they, like, it's like overcompensating all the rest so that that heat, you know, feel, feels, feels sizzly, white hot. And, and just, just think, like, I mean, less than 10 years? Maybe? Yeah, almost definitely. Yeah. Because when is that? 45? I mean, this stuff is pre-55. 50, 50, 54, yeah. Here we go. Some some uh, Harold Foster. Uh-huh. <laughs> Again, probably one that Wood got excited for. Right. Choreographing the fight scenes, you know? Yeah, amazing with like a morning star. Is that what that's called? A mace. I don't know what that is exactly, but it's such a knack. It's hard to believe this is a real weapon. That, well, you know what? I was going to say, it's hard to believe that's a weapon that people would make and use on each other. And then it's like, oh, no, of course not. Right. Think of all the weapons that people use on each other. Dude, this dented shield. Right? That's that, a good detail. That's a great like uh, level of thought. Yes. And, and co continuing the shine of the shield to go along with the contour of that fucked up shield. There are so many stories in here that it, it does make me want to like go see the printed page mm -hmm. and see how that stuff is handled. Yeah, it's too bad because like, like I, uh, whenever I would kind of upgrade and get like the Crocker and stuff, I would just give away my small comics, the colored ones, because that, that was when I had no room, zero room to, to be doubling down on shit. What's our morgue file look like here? Get some National Geographics. Yeah. <laughs> and and I do remember what this one looks like in print as of like the Russ Cochran reprints. And like they never color the the Oh um, yeah, I can see that. The uh elephant that stays like black and white dots. It's it's so striking in black and white form here where just your elephant is the gray. Yeah. Incredible. But it's a great elephant. Good little leopard or whatever that that is. Yeah, leopard spots I'm always impressed because of the ink technique. You, uh -huh. know, you can usually uh, really see somebody dabbing that brush on there to get those techniques to come through. You kind of destroyed that guy is from the leopard fight. Just scratch, just <laughs> ink lines all over his face. Man, that feels Frazetta. It does, which, which is to say it, it feels uh, Tarzan era Hell Foster. Very nice landscape. All right, and then of course... Let's get some covers in here. <laughs> and you can see this is that piece from the cover of this issue, blown up a little bit, as yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, for sure. And then when you get this stuff, you imagine like uh, Kane and Kronos or whatever their names are, the, the, the green aliens from, from uh, Simpsons. Mm -hmm. And they would do that stuff on Treehouse of Horror. They would be like, you know, creepy Jim Brooks and continue the kind of name tradition of EC. This is fucking weird, man. Real faded. Must have been using Higgins Black Magic. Yeah, another one that maybe was left out uh, in the sun, although the weird part is the red's not faded, which is usually the color and the, of the And the ink, I mean, India ink is archival, so it, it shouldn't fade, unless it's Higgins Black Magic. That starts from that position. <laughs> Much uh, better tended to page here. Yeah, and this is, this is such a motif of, like, the explorers, like, kind of discovering, uh, you know, the new world. Yeah, the landscape stuff, too, there's, there's a, uh, a real EC... You know what, Consistency just real, real quick, can you go back again? And I think this is also continuing to speak to my idea of you can only have the circles once. You notice that he never continues the entire circle for, for, for any of those. Like, this is the most prominent one, and it is the focal point. And then even stuff like this, like these little ones, they're still kind of broken up. Yeah, it's a great... I, I, really, I, I didn't even catch these. It's such a nice, like, repetition of shape. Yeah. It's, so many of us are like self-taught when right. it comes to this and you almost see like some kind of classical awareness yeah in in these uh these older illustrators yeah these dudes are taught different man 
can almost feel the seam, like the zipper goes up there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, like this is pre getting the uh, dinosaur anatomy, right? You know, cleared up. This is great texture. What a creature. Very awesome. And you do see white media here. Yeah, I feel like, you know, you know what's funny, dude, is this is a bad scan because it's like very fuzzy. Because I was going to say, man, I think they even hit it with some pencil and stuff. But you see it there. It's very fuzzy. It's not It's not a good scan at all. It's the only one that's like that, too. Because it's very crisp everywhere else. Do you agree? Yeah, you know what? I'm looking, though. Like, certain parts are sharp, which is really strange. I, you know. There have been a couple of these. And it's, again, early days of artist editions. Right. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, some of this stuff, you get the digital file. You know, like I own this, uh, Scott, I'll send you a scan. Exactly. Like, and then you're at the mercy of bad scanners, bad calibration, bad a, everything. A fucking amateur who likes original art but doesn't know shit about scanning yes. art. Yeah, exactly. Takes it to the Kinkos to get them to do it. Yeah, you know, because also, like, it's a big nobody has that size scanner. No. This is multiple scans. Or, yeah. Or that's the, uh, the V-Borg scan. It's like $10,000 scanners. Um, talking to Scott over, over time, some of these are photographed as well. Right. And a photograph would explain this is in focus, but this edge is I see, yeah. You know, so it's possible there's stuff like that too. Fall victim to the lens. A little dent in that helmet. Oh, man. The cover work's so stunning, you know, you get these big images like a cra a mob. How hard is it to draw this? Oh, totally. A couple guys down, a crowd leaning in on them. A parade happening yes. behind. And, 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 you know, we spoke about it before. Like, you have to cheat that. So, like, we already have so much dudes and stuff. And they're, they, for all intents and purposes, are on the same ground plane. So unless these guys are 15 heads tall, you know, like, you got to just nudge them up and just accept it. Also, there's, like, something very, like, unheroic. Like, like uh, he never really figured out the um, foreshortening stuff ever. Dots for eyes. I love it. Pretty detailed guys, too, for how small they are compared to your foreground. Absolutely. That's an amazing drawing. It is, and, and the color is super interesting, too. And, and, it, and it gives you a pause, because, like, you actually don't... Off the bat, you don't know what you're looking at, kind of. And, and it's an EC comic, so you think ghost. You know, you think that there's a ghost in the back seat or something at, at first. But, like, of course, no, that is the reflection of the girl that he's about to smash. Yeah, man, I, I really like all that. But these little s bits of color holds or whatever are on there. Yeah. This is one I'm curious to look up in color. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty iconic cover. Yeah, I would say, the, like, the, the iconic cover that, that would put together for sure. And you see his bio picture from my world. Of course. Very important. And even kayfabe the fucking paste ups, right? Like, <laughs> I, like that's a nice design touch. Yeah, I approve of that. Pretty fun as a, uh, as a design job, I imagine. I'm more on board for this uh, end paper with that level of detail and this, the, the, the wood textures everywhere. And yeah, it's gorgeous. Fantastic. Well, long overdue, man. Like I said, that's my first artist edition, and uh, it's still about as good as they get. It's it's the one uh, you know, like I I lusted over it. You know, I would my mouth would drool and shit when when I would see it on online, and and uh, just could never pull the trigger. And it certainly went through at least two printings before I got my my cake up enough to be able to buy these shits. I think I heard that that there's like another reprint happening but that was through unofficial channels so uh if anybody knows about that like let me know because of course like i'm i will you're ready i'm ready to go man <laughs> like this would be the one to destroy my shelf and so like i'm gonna have to put it somewhere else that's funny you it's know? funny to think of you laying this on top and then the shelf just coming down and because you know it'd be like <laughs> boom destroy that layer, never, boom destroy that layer. never see you again if that happens it's right. a lot of weight in there <laughs> yeah for, for sure and and uh, even if uh, i physically am okay for, for that moment i might just drive my car to the high level bridge and take do a half gainer if that thing comes down it may go through the floor no it'll go through the floor <laughs> it's going through the floor <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, you hope that there are studs and beams and things that will keep, like, not all the floor uh, falling down. All right. But then you think, you know, 15 feet, like, should be okay. Yeah, yeah most of those books will things. survive. 
Just talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Couple pins in the hip and I'll be good. That's right. You good to go? I am. Let's do it. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Uh, in part, the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel is brought to you by the Patreon, and the King Kayfabers on the Patreon get all the videos before anybody else. They've been hanging out with us in the live stream recording chat room uh, as we make these videos too, so you mitigate the Kayfabe effect by getting those videos before uh, the, the vids hit Gen Pop. We are going to be at uh, Big Apple Con in New York, December 16th. Make sure you swing through. Come say hi. It's been a while since me and Jimmy been in the in the Big Apple. So uh, we look forward to seeing you, man. We know a lot of friendly faces out there. See you there on uh, December 16th. Ultimately, very important, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. And before you, a little sample of... Uh, the bibliography but let's get into the details jimmy what do you have my latest release is street angel princess of poverty from image comics and street angel deadly deadly girl alive together these two books collect all of my street angel comics that i've made so far this actually collects some of the original street angel comics so this is the 20th anniversary of street angels publication and uh unlike deadly girl alive most of these are in black and white so Kind of a contrast. We look at a lot of cartoonist early work. This is a chance to see a, a character evolve over about 20 years from the uh, oldest to the newest story that is featured in there. I've also been self-publishing quite a bit. The 1986 zine, the BW zine, and True Crime Funnies are available on my website, jimrug.com, or on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. You can read those. And the Hulk Grand Design, collecting my uh, issues of Hulk Grand Design into one oversized volume. These are basically out of print. So if you haven't picked up a Hulk Grand Design yet, get one before they are completely gone, whether it's in your local comic shop if they still have one or on Amazon if they still have them. But uh, pick that up now because the way Marvel keeps books in print or doesn't keep books in print, those may be very difficult to come by. That's true, man. Uh, the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is in stores today. We only have about 25% of these things uh, left in, in, in stock, so you got to get it sooner than later, especially if you want to get this as a uh, Christmas present for your loved ones. Uh, thanks, everybody who have uh, already grabbed the books. Much appreciated. It's the best book I've made uh, to date, and I appreciate your patronage. Uh, the order of the day has been Red Room Comics for the past uh, three years. Three seasons of Red Room Comics, and come January is Crypto Killers, man. The last uh, season of Red Room Comics uh, uh, to date, uh, collecting four stories, all individual stories. Uh, so you can pick any of these volumes of Red Room up, and you're going to get a good sample. You, you should probably not scroll through anymore because you never know what's going to be in that. That's the most hardcore Red Room comic that I've ever uh, I've ever drawn. And uh, in November came the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, some of those volumes are out of print and didn't get a, re a reprinting in that Treasury Edition format. So this is the way that you're going to be able to get your hands on all of my Red Room Comics. This page got full price for that, man. <laughs> Writing, lettering, and... Uh, drawing credits you should do uh you should you should take like blank pieces of paper to shows in your portfolio just sign and, and be selling this page over and over <laughs> super fun man uh the books are the most important way to support the cartoonist kayfabe channel we are working functioning cartoonists and and our, our book sales are what what ultimately pay the bills but there's some other levels of support that you can give to uh, the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel directly. Jimmy, if you let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also listen to Cartoonist Kayfabe in podcast form if you are commuting and uh, don't want to get too distracted with the video on screen. Obviously, the video is the best way because you want to see this beautiful artwork. But we know that uh, some people have requested it in their cars. And so now that is available wherever you get your podcast. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is under this video. There you have it. All the ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel and your humble uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe hosts. Uh, without further ado, Jimmy, can you please give the people the marching orders so that we can be on our way? Read more comics. <laughs>